Hey everyone, my name is Frances Perry. I've been working in big data infrastructure for about 15 years. Originally, I was at Google working on some of our internal data processing. Before that shifted over into Google Cloud and I was on some of our products there. Currently, I'm an engineering leader at Mother Duck, which is a small data analytics startup here in Seattle. Now today, we're gonna to revisit a couple of those foundational assumptions that we had when we first designed distributed big data infrastructure. Things have changed around us since that point in time, so we should reevaluate the way we process data and change that as well. I'll start by introducing you to emerging technologies, including DuckDB, which is an open source data analytics engine, and MotherDuck, which extends DuckDB into the cloud. And then finally, we'll end with a demo of a data intensive application that combines both of these and gives you instantaneous data visualizations right there in your browser. Now, I'm sure we could go further back, but for today, we'll just start in around the year 2000. At this point in time, data center technology was changing. Instead of expensive mainframes, data centers started relying on cheap off-the-shelf components that you could go down and grab at Fry's Electronics. Right? There were lots of machines in these data centers, but they were just cheap and they had a high failure rate. So what that meant is as software engineers, we had to adapt to how we built for these data centers. The MapReduce paper came out in 2004, and it described an algorithmic pattern that could easily scale across multiple machines, even when those machines failed on us. And it was flexible enough to support a large range of use cases. Almost any algorithm you could think of could be just twisted slightly and run in the MapReduce framework. So MapReduce could scale, it could scale to more machines and even more. And if our data got bigger, we could split it even more finely and throw more machines at it, right? This power was really obvious to everyone, else, everyone in the community. So the open source community took these ideas and started Hadoop, which really founded a full ecosystem of distributed data processing systems. Soon enough, everyone was able to use these systems to process all the data they could eat. Everyone that is who knew Java and knew how to manage a cluster and all the things that came along with these large distributed systems. So some tools started, big, started hiding these big distributed systems. They put them behind what was a much more familiar SQL interface. And at this point, people started to really understand how to interact with and use these tools. We've seen, particularly in the last few years, this explosion where data analysts can become data engineers. So more and more people are now able to participate in data processing. All of these people processing all of this data and spending all this money on those big distributed systems. But a lot has changed since we first started building those systems. So for example, our machines look fundamentally different than they used to. Moore's law had a good run, cramming more and more transistors on a chip, right? But eventually the laws of physics do get in the way. So now what we're seeing is machines start adding more and more cores. So today, if you want more compute capacity, you don't just throw another machine at the problem. You go off and you get a bigger machine. So those machines from the MapReduce paper, they had two cores, two, right? Today, on my way home, I can grab a gallon of milk, and the 96 core machine over at Google Cloud, right? The size and scale of the machines that we're operating with is just fundamentally different. Even this MacBook sitting right here on the desk in front of me, right? It's got eight cores, 16 gigs of, gigs of RAM, and most days I'm using it as a web browser, right? It's incredibly overpowered for what I usually do with it. So our machines got bigger, but all that big data just accumulated, right? We kept adding to it, we kept generating it, and it's all sitting there, it's floating in our data lake. Occasionally, we're going back and we're looking at that whole accumulated archive. We're doing backfill, or we got it for compliance reasons, we're retraining new machine models, new, new AI models. Um, but most of the time, we're not using anything but the most recent chunk, right? Most processing that we do is over a working set that is just a tiny portion of the full data that we have. MotherDuck's co-founder Jordan came from Google BigQuery, and in his experience, 99% of queries that were run ran over less than 10 gigs of data. And 90% of those 
or even less than 100 megs. So if you take that idea and you sit and noodle with it and go take that concept of larger machines and smaller working sets, that's what gets us to DuckDB. DuckDB is an open source data space started by folks over in the Netherlands in about 2019. Now it's built quite the growing community in the last few years. And that's really because it has two unique features. DuckDB is not distributed, full stop, right? And it won't be. It's built to be embedded inside a single host process. There's no dependencies, but it's still got lots of performance tricks. There's some clever memory management, some vectorized query execution. So it's still going to be performance focused, but it's not going to get performance by scaling out across more machines. And people are really starting to notice how much you can still get done in this model. So about a year ago, someone benchmarked DuckDB on their laptop, and it outperformed a 16-core data warehouse just with the MacBook that was already there, sitting on the desk. It was going to be idle otherwise. So that essentially gives you free processing, right? You don't have to pay for what's already sitting there. The second feature of DuckDB is really the portability. So DuckDB compiles into WebAssembly, or WASM, which means it can run directly in all your major web browsers. No installation necessary. If you've got a web browser, you've got a fully powered database now. So we can take both of those core technologies, but it's still purely a local solution. So Mother Duck takes DuckDB and takes it up a notch by moving it into the cloud as well. Not instead of, but as well, right? So here's DuckDB running on your laptop. Sometimes you want the flexibility of the cloud. You want to shut that laptop lid. You want to automate your job. You need something slightly beefier than what you've got in front of you, but still not a full distributed system. So Mother Duck runs a personal instance of DuckDB for you in the cloud. Now, this cloud instance of DuckDB is going to coordinate with your local instance. The query planning that's being done is joint, and it's moving data back and forth in intelligent ways to really optimize for getting as much processing done as close to you as possible so that you're getting that interactive and instantaneous feel. The DuckDB instance in the cloud is dynamically scalable, so we'll handle vertically scaling it within a single machine so that you know, you're only paying for what you actually need there. But as much as you can, you're using your local laptop. Now, MotherDuck also provides a storage abstraction that looks just like a friendly local file system, which is what DuckDB expects. But actually, under the hood, right, it's a fully, fully built out cloud uh, storage system. So we've got a layered format there that's going to allow us to do things like data sharing, zero copy clones, time travel. So now we've got a pretty comfortable setup for our duck to do their data analysis. But if you've seen Mighty Ducks, ducks fly together. There's a flock involved, right? So Mother Duck has a flexible data sharing model that lets you bring along your other friends. And they can each use their own interface of choice. Maybe it's the Python SDK. Maybe it's the command line. And they'll get their own instance of DuckDB in the cloud, their own processing playground, dynamically sized for whatever query load they're running. But together, you're now all able to query away over that shared data set. So let's get to the demo and actually see DuckTV and Mother Duck working together. And we'll do this with, through the lens again of a data intensive application. So these applications are everywhere. They're what helps you and me interact with and understand the data that's all around us. Google Analytics is sort of your most standard example, right? Helping webmasters everywhere understand how people are using their website. But I have one on my mobile phone that helps me manage my money, right? As engineers, we're all using observability tools to understand and keep our services running. Anywhere where you're playing with a graph, you're pulling sliders, you're, you're thinking about and analyzing, and your brain is working away as you're driving and playing with this data. Now, traditionally, to build a data application like this, you'd use what we call a three-tier architecture. You've got the client-side code that's running on the user's laptop. Then you're going to make calls through the slow and twisty paths of the internet to get to your application server, right? which then is going to query your database. Client, application server, database. Those are your standard three tiers. Now, when you have this, you're likely going to need a team of folks to keep it up and running. So they're adjusting the caching logic so things feel snappy in the browser. They're patching the database, monitoring the server. 
right? Now, it's not surprising. A lot of places now offer serverless. So what that will do is let us carve out that second tier, that web app. But with Mother Duck and DuckDB, we can go even further and drop below two tiers. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to think about the data that we're using. When we interact with it, we're often starting with a coarse filter query that selects a working set that's going to be much smaller than the original data set. So for example, visitors to a specific part of the website or my spending just over the last year. Now it's totally reasonable to take that smaller data working set and ship it to the laptop and continue to interact with it and do your detailed exploration locally. Right? And because you're operating locally, your, your, your queries are zero milliseconds away. They're right there. And you're going to be able to get this instantaneous back and forth. And together, that's going to unlock entirely new ways of visualizing and interacting with your data. But at the same time, even while you're getting that power of your local laptop, the cloud's still there. Right? It gives you a seamless transition between your local working set and the full data set. So if you want to change, the, adjust the working set, move back a year in time, or add in additional data, right? you're still just using those same happy SQL queries that you're used to. There's no adjustments you need to make. And you can rely on Mother Duck to go ahead and do that hybrid query planning across the laptop and the cloud to give you that seamless experience. So with that, when we do it in DuckMap, which is, is very important, we had the client and the database. We've taken the database tier, we split it in half, and moved half of it to the client. So that leaves us with one laptop and half a database. That's a one and a half tier architecture. So let's get into this demo. So we'll be using DuckDB and Mother Duck, but we'll also add in Mosaic, which is a tool that lets us do some pretty cool data visualizations. So the data set that we're going to dig into is Seattle weather. You can see we've got a lovely spring day here in Seattle. And we'll dig into how we can play with this to better understand if Seattle weather really is as bad as everyone says it is. All right, so here we have a web browser. All I've done is load this demo page, right? I haven't installed anything locally. What I'm going to do real quick is just log into Mother Duck with my web token. I'll just get my token, copy it back here. And this is authenticating me to Mother Duck as myself. And now I will grab the Seattle weather data set. So at this point, what's happened is that we've gone to the web, down to Mother Duck, downloaded enough of this data to be able to begin visualizing. And from this point on, this visualization is going to run locally on my laptop. So every time I move my mouse, we're going to be seeing new SQL queries running on DuckDB on my laptop and updating this presentation so fast that it's going to feel completely instantaneous. So in this graph, just to orient you to the data that we've got here, We've got temperature going up our y-axis and months of the year across our x-axis. And then different kinds of weather in different colors. So yellow is going to be our elusive sun here in Seattle. You're going to see a lot of that blue rain, little gray fog, smatterings of purple snow. But we can just now sit and play with this data. So I can just go and grab my mouse, and I'm going to be able to slide, grab a sliding window across a subset of data. And at this point, I've just run a new SQL query over just that portion of the data, and I can begin playing with it and interacting with it. So I've proven to myself our summers are gorgeous. Let's check out the early spring and the late fall. Definitely a little more rainy. I can filter down, take a look at just snow. Yeah, we, we might have a white Christmas, but, but maybe not. But if we go back to sun, I can prove to you right here, right? It's not gray all the time in Seattle. We have sun year round just along with all that rain. All right, so bringing this back, what you've seen today is that we can drop those old assumptions, and that's going to enable us to think differently. Our data might be big, but more often than not, we're only using that little chunk of it. And the machine shapes that are sitting right there in front of us, they've fundamentally shifted from when we first designed our data processing infrastructure. So let's take that old, big, heavy, expensive, distributed data processing infrastructure and catch up to actually how data is working for us today. We want to use the cores we've got right in front of us. And by doing that, we're going to experience instantaneous results, queries that are zero milliseconds away. And that's going to let us shape, fundamentally interact with our data in a different way. And it's going to save us money, right? I've got those cores. They're just sitting there running my web browser. 
Let's put them to work for us. So the cloud's still there when we need it, right? Mother Duck will make that seamless for us, but we don't have to live with our head in the clouds. It's there to serve us, not confuse us. All right, so thank you so much. I hope I've intrigued you to learn a little bit more about different ways of thinking about data processing. Please go check out Duck TV, Mother Duck, and Mosaic. Thank you so much.